championship series in the national championship game. He dug his spurs into coaching college kids 37 years ago. 17 years later, Hayden Fry rode into Iowa. He has outlasted men named Woody and Bo. Today, Hayden and Iowa have their hands full with a rejuvenated Michigan defense. A week ago, the Wolverine D pitched the second half shutout at Michigan State. They're back. You are looking live at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa on a rain-swept Saturday afternoon. A year ago, the Hawks forced the Wolverines against the wall to continue their unbeaten season. October has rolled around again, and the Big Ten season swings into high gear as the Hawkeyes get ready to roll onto the field. Good afternoon and welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger. Well, both Iowa and Michigan would dearly love to forget September, although both did wind up on a very high note. But now they get down to the serious business of chasing Ohio State and Wisconsin in the Big Ten race. The winner today goes to 2-0 in the conference. And Dan Michigan has to be delighted not only about his defense, but his revitalized offense, too. Well, they got to be happy about this weather today, Brent. They want to run the ball right at Iowa today. And to do that, they got two running backs to do it. They got the A train, Anthony Thomas. He's the power guy. He's going to run between the tackles. His 69-yard touchdown against MSU last week was huge. Now when they want to run wide, it'll be Clarence Williams. He had a big game pass blocking as well as running the ball last week, too. Now, Iowa wants to throw the ball. That means this will be the first big test for redshirt freshman Khalil Hill. Four touchdowns in just four games, Brent. And the standings tell the story. Wisconsin coming from behind today goes ahead at 2-0. and The Bucks with a big win over Penn State. And again, the winner here will go to 2-0. and John Saunders and Todd Blackledge come. It's October. It's perfect for Big Ten football. Jason Baker kicking off for the Hawkeyes who won the flip. They deferred. Michigan will go on the attack initially. The a train Anthony Thomas will field this one. One foot in the goal line, and here he comes. And he has stopped way short of the 20 as the Hawkeyes form on him at the 15-yard line. Now let's take a look at our Chili's starting lineup. Tom Brady, 15 of 26 for 208 yards a week ago. One touchdown at one interception. You'll see both running backs. Clarence Williams will draw a start today. The two big wide receivers, they scare the Iowa coaches to death. High Streets and Marcus Knight. John Jansen, we'll watch him against the great one, Eric DeVries, before the day is over. Now first down for the Wolverines. That single back. And they're going to run William straight ahead for about a yard against a very fired up Hawkeye defense early on. Sadat makes the first stop of the game for Hayden Fry's D here. And there he is, number 94, folks. Keep an eye on him. Jared DeVries. None better in college football in that defensive front. Two very good linebackers, Hughes and Clark. Secondary hopes it's up to the task. Eric Thigpen, number 21, is a big play defender. The Hawkeyes show press. Brady going to drop it off to Williams on the screen. Breaks free, 35, 40. He's got great speed. And pushed out of bounds on an angle by Turing Holman, the junior corner after a 47-yard gain. There is a penalty flag, however, down at the 37-yard line. And it's going to come back against Michigan. That's a big break for Iowa because that 47-yarder really will jumpstart a team like Michigan, especially when they start backed up in their own end like this. Holding. Offense. 10-yard penalty. Still second down. The three today is Bill Lemagne. Looks like number 86, Ty Streets, holding against Matt Bowen, the safety. That allowed Williams to get down the sideline. All back on the 22-yard line. Aaron Shea in that backfield with Williams, and this is Shea stepping in motion. 
Williams counters back to daylight, and they're crossing that line of scrimmage pretty easy here for the offensive coordinator so far, Dan. Well, for Mike DeBoer to be happy after this one's over, he wants to the 200 rushing and 200 passing. They did that last week against Michigan State, but the biggest problem they've had, they have yet to have a ball game without any turnovers. Now facing second and two and sticking with their same personnel, different formation. But they're going with this personnel for the time being, which means Williams will try to jitterbug and nothing doing. Jammed at the 37-yard line, Matthews, the senior linebacker, number 37, making the stop. And as far as Bob Elliott, defensive coordinator for Iowa, is concerned, he thinks uh, for them to be successful, you've got to be able to hold Michigan to three yards or less per rush and then six yards per pass attempt. It may be easier to do this because Michigan is only averaging six and a half and six and a half yards per pass attempt. Here comes the A-train on third and one. Thomas checks in. Aaron Shea, the lead pullback offset to the right. They're going to come behind Shea. Thomas stretches it out. First down, Michigan. With an out of bounds as he crosses the 40-yard line. Eric Thigpen, the free safety. A year ago, Iowa in Ann Arbor jumped out to a 21-7 lead. It was big play time. It was Kavian Banks, now with the Jacksonville Jaguars exploding. And it was Tim White with a kickoff return that was spectacular. Watch him weave his way that set up still another score. And Michigan was forced to come back. Its biggest comeback of the season. They were down 21-7 at the half. And Tim Dwight is now with the Atlanta Falcons. First down and 10. Wolverine back up at the line. Thomas stays in. Play fake wide open as Kuhn the tight end. Battles across midfield. Close to a 10-yard gain on first down. So the three guys who are gone, and oh, how the Hawkeyes missed them. We told you about White and Banks. Matt Sherman, in this game a year ago, broke a finger on his hand. The Hawkeye coaches will tell you they were never the same at the quarterback position the rest of the way. So it was a critical game for both teams. They went in opposite directions after the comeback. By the Wolverines a year ago, they marched to that great undefeated season, of course, and the Hawkeyes were in retreat and scrambling the rest of the season as the chains come across the field. And Sam Sword made the interception for Michigan after Matt Sherman had broke his thumb, and unbeknownst to the coaches, it uh, was the reason the ball kind of fluttered to Lloyd Carr's great middle linebacker, Sam Sword. It's the only game that Carr has coached against the Hawkeyes. This is the fourth season as head coach, replacing Gary Moeller. And on the other side, the legend in his 20th year, Hayden Fry. There is his record. I know there is a rule that you can't make the Hall of Fame unless you win a certain percentage. With Hayden Fry, forget it. Man flat out deserves to be in any Hall of Fame you want regarding college football. Second down, one down to Wolverine. Break it out of the huddle. Double tight package on a rain spot Saturday, and there was movement by the left tight end. Uh, Jeremy Tooman moved just a little bit. Perhaps the crowd noise uh, affected him. He says, I couldn't hear you, Tom. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yards, no second down. Second down and six. Shea comes in motion toward the line, and Brady is going to drop it back off to Anthony Thomas, who's got the first in. Well conceived play by the Wolverines. Forced out of bounds on that far side by Matt Bowen after a gain of 10. You know, that's a 10 yard gain on the screen pass. They had a 47 yarder called back because of holding. Obviously, something the Wolverines have seen in the Hawkeye defense tells them that the screen pass is going to be good today. That's Brady's. probably because, Brent, excuse me, because Iowa plays so much man-to-man -man in their secondary, 
if the receiver can come down and pick off a linebacker, well, he's got man coverage on that running back. That will really open up the screen pass. Brady perfect with his three tosses so far. Here comes Thomas on a counter, and he is stuffed. Bowen, again, number nine. And let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team today, Jack Aru. Jack, sorry, you got to be out there in the raindrops, my friend. Oh, Brent, it's okay. This rain has been with us for the last day and a half. Now, this... This particular uh, stadium has what's called prescription athletic turf. They have pumps that can pump water out at 400 gallons a minute. But surprisingly, Iowa's elected not to turn them on. It's a very slick track, Brent. Well, it was slick in Columbus as we watched Ohio State beat up on Penn State today. Let's see what happens here. Second down and 11. Brady throws right, got man on man, and overthrow. Penalty flag is down. They're going to call Matt Bowen. I'm going to call Matt Bowen, but I'm not sure this ball was catchable. Marcus Knight got all turned around, and Tom Brady's throw was real high. Bowen is number nine. He's a safety working against Marcus Knight is on a uh, corner pattern, and that ball looks like uh, it was running out there a little bit like a duck. Marcus Knight could have caught the ball. It obviously, it was pass interference. The question is, could he have caught the ball? It's automatic first down, 15 yards in the college game. Not this spot of the foul, 34. which could be so penal for the National Football So, the Wolverines will have a first down at the Hawkeye 31-yard line, in case you just joined us. This is the opening series of the game from Iowa City. And earlier, the Buckeyes beating Penn State 28-9. And a penalty flag comes down as... A penalty flag. Prior to the snap, the illegal substitution, offense, five yards. Now, this is directly the result of Nick Saban complaining last week after the game in Ann Arbor about Lloyd Carr and the Michigan coaches substituting very late. It prevents the defensive coaches from substituting personnel if you can get your substitution package out there quicker on the offensive side. And obviously, the referees alert to it, and they call it here early against Michigan. Now Brady snaps it off from Cleet Tuman. And his knee was down. That's why he did not run after that, unlike an NFL tight end. Once the knee was down, he was inside the 30-yard line. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Chili's a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. Solomon Smith Barney, let's get to work. Success is earned. And Nike. But in getting back to that illegal substitution, if the players come off the bench and go to their positions, that is legal. That's what they did last week against Michigan State. This time the player came off the field and joined the huddle when there are already 11 men in the huddle. To not have 12 men in the huddle. Tenth play coming up on the Michigan drive. Deep drop wants that screen again, and here comes Williams dropped it. Got to go on. It could be loose. Incomplete. They wave it off. Bowen alertly going for the football in case they called it a fumble after the reception. But they wave it off, and it's incomplete. Real late whistle by the officials there as the uh, ball players obviously didn't hear any whistle. That's why Bowen kept hustling after that loose ball. The nickel package on the field for the Hawkeyes. Jared DeVries. Ready to get down in the defensive front. And now quarterback Tom Brady brings the Wolverines up for third down and seven. Under the shotgun. Great time. Tosses underneath. Williams on the juggle. Hangs on. First down, Michigan. I'll send you to John Saunders in New York. We're in time for the Burger King update. Florida against Alabama. Tough game for the Gators. Tony Zhao, though, of Alabama, trying to toss this one to get it to out of bounds and perhaps stop the clock. Couldn't do it. Tony George picks it off, and Florida holds on for the 16-10 win. Brent. 
Michigan with a first down inside the 20 yard line on that nice catch by Williams who juggled it just a bit. And back on the field is Anthony Thomas. And DeVries comes busting across, insisting he was pulled. We'll let them sort it out, but you got an indication of how quick 94 can be off the ball. And maybe. You saw a little flinch there by John Jansen and David Brandt. Boy, he shot a across there, didn't he? Fire to the snap. Bust up. the offensive lineman what a battle this will be if Jansen has to block the as much of the day we'll see 94 get down now and ready and he claims he was pulled back again Jared DeVries smashes back down across comes across the line of scrimmage and says he flinched on me again seen a defensive lineman react any quicker to a flinch. Here he is right there and there's the flinch as Brant falls forward again. Two plays in a row. Jared DeVries has his defense gained 10 yards. That's five penalties for 30 yards and here comes the toss play but it's Thomas running it stretching it wide to the left and he is out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Normally Michigan runs that with Clarence Williams on the toss play. Matt Bowen man from Glen Ellen Illinois being very active. You know, that may be a, a pattern of uh, self scouting there by Michigan. Just as you said Brent uh, usually it's Clarence Williams on the toss sweep and uh, they like to run Anthony Thomas on the ISO and the counter play. But they're changing things up pretty good this first drive. Second and 13. Let's see if they search for Tuman. They're going to run the toss and come back to the other side now with Thomas. And he is smacked down as he crosses. The 15 by Joe Slattery, the junior corner number 11, coming up to make that hit. Williams replaces Thomas, and you can see trotting off to the sideline, and they will also bring Aaron Shea back in. Now, Aaron Shea was able to get open in space, circling underneath against the Spartans. This is his kind of play, third and six, converted tight end. He's the lone running back that the offensive line can hold up. They show press. They step up. Locking holes. Got his coverage. Touchdown, Michigan. Brady hitting high streets on a quick slant. That was the most important, impressive part of Tom Brady's game last week against MSU when he read the blitz, hung in the pocket, Here's Shea with a good job of finding somebody come loose, Taj Clark. And when you don't have a safety in the middle of the field because he's blitzing you, that means you can throw that post pattern and let your receiver run for it. Great play by Brady and Ty Street. Hey, Feely makes it 7-0. Michigan marches down, taking the opening kickoff in for a touchdown with seven rushes and seven passes. They went 84 yards in 620. Watch Streets. Makes a beautiful move as he turns Matt Bowen around. Touchdown, Wolverines. Time out. Away from the field. It back down. They'll take a knee in the end zone. Doug Miller, and it will come out. And we can take a look at the Chili's offensive lineup here for the Hawkeyes. Rob Tyne draws a start. Liddell Betts still being bothered by that groin injury. So Tyne from Iowa City right here. Great. Great athletes on the outside. Jamini and Hill, whom we looked at. And Hill, the son of former NFL player J.D. Hill. Derek Rose, one of the better centers in the Midwest. Anchors that offensive line, which has had trouble. Young quarterback is Kyle McCann. Redshirt freshman. Comes up to the line of scrimmage now against this Michigan defense, which did such a great job, especially in the second half against the Spartans last year. McCann, under pressure, steps away. Nobody open, and he'll gain one yard and step out of bounds on the far side. It is this defense and these men doing the job. Renus on the nose. He's a flat-out load, number 58. 
juggling of linebackers, but I think the key thing is the fact that Sam Sword getting healthier and healthier by the week. And then, of course, in the defensive backfield, Tommy Hendricks from Houston, Texas, the free safety. So Hayden Fry and his staff with their hands full here today. What to do with this Wolverine defense? They're going to run a toss play to daylight time going nowhere. We had a chance to ask Hayden Fry, how do you plan to attack the Michigan D? Here's what he had to say. Well, for us, uh, being a very young, inexperienced team, it's going to be difficult. Uh, and with the weather, we, uh, we'd we like to throw the football because that's what we do best. Well, here they are in a throw situation if they do it best, Dan. But third and 11 is not exactly a situation anybody wants to be throwing at. Yeah, but I can't wait to see both these uh, wide receivers, Khalil Hill and Bashir Yamini, operate in the secondary. Yamini's number five, and Hill is number three when they go deep. Michigan trying to get a rush. They're going to run the draw play against it. Short of the first down. Yes, Bob Pine and uh, the crowd not liking that call by Hayden here in the early going. Well, this is part of the problem is this team is just too inexperienced to be worrying about putting a bunch of numbers on them. All Don Patterson said to us yesterday is the one number we want to have is one more point than Michigan. There is James Whitley. Made a mistake. Late in the first half against Michigan State when he muffed the punt, allowed the Spartans to get back in it. But he came back, played strongly in the second half. Those fumble on the fair catch, and Iowa pounces on it. Whitley fumbles the fair catch. And the Hawkeyes are convinced that they've got it. Doug Miller at the bottom of the pile there, Brent, with a special team star for the Hawkeyes. But this ball should have been caught. It's a fair catch here. All he has to do is squeeze it. It goes right between his hands, his elbows, and there's Miller scraping at the bottom of the pile for the recovery. Last week against Michigan State, he's handled a kickoff return. We told you about the muff punt. And they allowed a 67-yard kickoff return. So special teams punting the Wolverines again. First down now for Kyle McCann and the Hawks. They try to set a screen. Nothing doing. Sack. Back at the 42-yard line. Sack number one. And Mr. Sword delivered the blow again along with Dahani Jones. Sack number one today and number 17 on the season against the uh, Hawkeye quarterbacks. Sam Sword coming free. Boy, I tell you what, if you're playing against a linebacker as good as Sam Sword, and I'm the quarterback, I'm sure as heck going to find out who is responsible for blocking number 93. That's ridiculous, letting him run free right at the quarterback. An 11-yard loss on that sack. Puts the ball back at the Wolverine 42-yard line. I'm out, and Kyle McCann is being befuddled and troubled by this experienced Michigan defense. The Wolverines lead at 7-0. Time out in Iowa City. Jeremy Tooman, touchdown. Here come the Wolverines. And that man who's doing it here today on the fluttering pass off the broken finger, Sam Sword. And it was 28-24, as Solomon Smith Barney remembers. Now the Hawkeyes with second down and a bunch. Going to run the toss play with time, time, daylight. Strong run to the 32-yard line. And Sword again. That's a huge run for Rob Tyne. That gets uh, back all the yardage that they just lost on the quarterback sack. and gives them a chance on third and ten to at least have a decent shot at uh, either picking up the first down or getting their great field goal kickers in range. Third and ten. Receivers covered. Sacked again. By James Hall this time. And let us check in with New York and John Saunders. John. Brent, I know you love numbers in this game. Washington State against UCLA. This is Keith Brown. 11 yards on the run. 14-0. Consider this. 
UCLA perfect 11 for 11 from the red zone this year. Not just perfect, they're all touchdowns. Brent. An amazing performance by the Bruins. As tough a team offensively as we've got any place, huh, Dan? Yeah, they got the uh, uh, unexpected bye last week uh, thanks to Hurricane George. Well, here comes the young man, Tim Douglas. You can see what he did against Illinois with a strong wind in his back in Champaign. Three 50-yarders, including a 58-yarder. He will not match that here this afternoon. So the sack exchange added again for the Wolverines. And this one really hurt because it, it takes uh, the field goal kicker really out of range, although he had a great day last week against Illinois with, uh, with the win. But it's wet here, and uh, if you can, it's going to be seeing this type of pass rush from the Wolverines. They woke up last week against Michigan State. Nate Miller a couple of times. There's Hall. There's a double team one. Those really hurt. This is what McCann can expect the rest of the day here. Toss play to Clarence Williams. Williams running strong to the left hand side and just short of the 40 yard line. Raj Clark, the junior, making the stop. Michigan's first possession resulted in a touchdown. Second down and six. Brady checking the plays on that wristband to the Where's getting the signals in from the sideline. Street and Knight. The two experienced wideouts. Not a lot of substituting of personnel on a day like this as far as Michigan is concerned. Brady looks underneath for Williams. Goes over him. Intercepted. Picked off by Holman on the ricochet. The second turnover by the Wolverines and this definitely was not Brady's fault. Right in and out of the hands of the receiver. Good job of protection. Right, Watch the double team right there on DeVries. Brady gets slapped in the face but throws a great pass tonight. Right through his hands. Iowa getting opportunities, but they're going to have to cash in to stay in the game with the experienced Michigan team. Two turnovers. This the second. Got to make something happen in a hurry. Kyle McCann. Michigan has befuddled him. They'll run the draw play with Tyne. Tyne finding some daylight, smashes across the 45 and into the hands of Jones. And a reminder of what we've got on the schedule next week for you. We've got regional coverage. We'll be up in Minnesota. Penn State and the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. We'll see what kind of defense the Golden Gophers will play in that dome next Saturday afternoon here in the Midwest. Glenn Mason improving that team. Georgia Tech against North Carolina State down in the ACC. And of course, we may be covering Notre Dame, Arizona State as Notre Dame with a big lead on Stanford the last time I checked it. Now, Betts is in with bowlers. On the toss play, Betts, his first carry of the game. This is Liddell Betts, the red shirt freshman. Bothered by an injured groin, the reason why he didn't start today. Didn't practice a whole lot either during the week, Brent. And on this sloppy field, it appears to be holding up pretty well now. But when you have a groin injury or a hamstring injury, especially if you're a running back, it makes it very difficult. And it starts to play on your mind a little bit, especially when you have to make a power cut. Third down and three. Iowa and Hayden Fry have been noted through the years for utilizing tight ends. Here comes the handoff to the young man again, and he is going nowhere. Whitley helping lead the assault coming up from that corner spot. Number five trying to make amends for that fumbled punt. That's the best way to make amends. Make a big tackle on third and short. I'm curious to see who they're going to send back, and they're going to send back Whitley again as the uh, receiver on this punt. Jason Baker. You can see camera shots here with the rain coming down, the fog and the mist. Whitley lets this one bounce, and it'll be down right at the 15-yard line. Two good primetime football games coming up. Sunday night on ESPN Seattle Kansas City who gave the Seahawks this schedule Pittsburgh on the road and now Kansas City 
Oh, brother. Then Monday night, NFC Central. Doesn't get any better than Minnesota Green Bay. Dennis Green with Randy Moss, Chris Carter, Jake Reed. They're huge. You know all about Brett Favre. That's coming up Sunday and Monday night now. The Hawkeyes over there on the sideline need to get something going if they can offensively. The Michigan defense has stifled them. Even after the two turnovers, Brady back on the field. Anthony Thomas is his running back. Here comes Thomas slashing to the middle and crosses the 20 yard line. Let's check in again with Jack Aru. Jack. We're going offensive coordinator Mike DeBoard told me just before the game started that this inclement weather would have concerned him a week ago. He said back then we really didn't know what we had in terms of a running game. But the emergence of Thomas and Williams says it gave me a lot of self satisfaction last week and a lot of confidence this week in the muck. The freshman Justin Fargus about to see his first game action. Number 34. And on the screen behind Brady is where he lines up. They'll run Fargus on the toss play, looking for daylight. He has zip and out of bounds. First down with Matt Bowen riding him out of bounds on that far side. Look quick on that play. Well, you know, Anthony Thomas has surprising speed. We know that Clarence Williams is fast, but Justin Fargus, he is the fastest of the running backs. And what a, uh, a trio to throw at a Hawkeye defense right now. All three of them are doing extremely well. That's a great way to start for a freshman, too. Continue to run away from Jared DeVries. Now they'll give him a shot to come across the line of scrimmage, and he was taken out of the play that time. It was the interior of the Hawkeye defense doing the job. Ryan Lofton was in there, the junior. It's great watching this battle between Jared DeVries and John Jansen. They've probably only played about 30 or 40 games against each other. Good team defense that time for the Hawks. Jansen probably looking to see if they're going to leave Jared right there in that spot. They do move him around. Jumping on the mouthpiece. Williams back in it, running back for the Wolverines. Fake toss, naked bootleg. Here comes Brady. Good action on it. Drop by Campbell, the tight end. Mark Campbell. Let one get away. Tough chance for Campbell on the uh, bootleg that time. Ball thrown behind him by Brady. Heck, Tom only gets so many chances. Throwing out in front of me. He said that with his eyes, though, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> Third down and 11 now for Mr. Brady. They've been perfect on third down. They'll have to do this one the hard way. They need 11. Seconds counting off in the opening quarter. Williams is your running back. Looking for Knight on the back far sideline. Tice Reeds intercepted again, picked off by Holman, his second of the game. Well, you know, Tom Brady's from San Mateo, California. This is his first taste of Big Ten fall weather. And he's thrown a couple of ducks out there. This ball is poorly thrown and is probably a little bit wet, too. Trying to get it down the sidelines, two streets. Streets never had a shot at it. Perfect coverage by Holman. His second interception of the game. Receiving congratulations on the sideline. But can the offense do anything with these turnovers? That's three by the Wolverines. Betts is in with bowlers. The draw play, Betts crosses midfield. Ain't about a yard or two. You can hear the plastic slapping on those shoulder pads down there. This Wolverine defense must rise again to the occasion. Now the Wolverines have got good pass pressure so far on Kyle McCann. A lot of draw plays trying to offset that. So three turnovers for the Wolverines in the opening quarter. And only nine total yards for the Hawkeyes. One on a botched punt. The rest, a DB by the name of Holman. He picked Brady twice. But so far, the Wolverines lead the game, having scored on their first drive. Timeout. Cannon, I have a hard to throw when you're on the seat of your pants. Two sacks. Brings them on up here with a second and nine to open the second quarter. Michigan out a touchdown. It was a quick first quarter. McCann deep drop this time. Has time. 
Underneath, complete inside the 30-yard line. And number five, Yamini with his first reception, hits 20 yards. And he could smile. Yeah, he'd, he'd be smiling a lot more if this ball was thrown just a little bit better. The play action gives McCann the time to throw. But if he gets this ball up just a little bit higher, Yamini catches it and waltzes into the end zone. The Wolverines anywhere near the sprinter. That's their initial first down of this game. And the redshirt freshman with the Hawks back at the line. Feeling a little more confident, he'll change the play into the eye formation. Here comes Betts on the toss. Daylight right side. Crosses the 25-yard line with Sam Sword hanging on. Sam Sword appears to be as close to 100% as he's been all year. 15 tackles last week against the Spartans. He's off to a great start so far today with five. Four more, and he'll reach that magic 300 number, Brent. Interesting story at fullback for the Hawks. Number 35, Trevor Bowlers. Came here from Canada. We'll be seeing him, of course, as the day unfolds. They've got him out because they want a better receiver, and there was movement in the offensive line that time. Rogers, the right tackle, broke the snap count and pulled out, and it'll be five costly yards against the Hawkeyes. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five yards, still second down. Yeah, they get four yards on first down, and uh, so now they're looking at second and six. You see Sam's numbers. That one tackle for loss, uh, that's where he is uh, exceptional. This is second down in a bunch right here after that penalty. Here's McCann calling the play. Nothing doing. It was read perfectly by the Wolverines, and it was James Hall, the linebacker, who absolutely destroyed that play by coming across the line of scrimmage. There was no chance because of Hall's penetration on it. You know, Brent, uh, he changed the play as you mentioned. Watch the safety, and here's the linebacker. They're both coming this way. They may know what the Hawkeyes' audible system is. Third and they certainly reacted like they did that time. Man. Aggressively coming up to that side. Now it's third down and 12 for McCann. That blocking, deflected incomplete. Tried to hit his tight end, Austin Wheatley, that time. Dwayne Patman. The safety who has replaced the suspended Marcus Ray for the third game. I thought Patman played a spectacular game against Michigan State, stepping in a week ago after the Ray suspension. Well, that shows you how huge that offside penalty against Matt Rogers was. They were looking at a second and six, and now after two bad plays, they're looking at a real long field goal again. Going to try Tim Douglas. This will be a 49-yarder, way short on his first effort. This one far enough and put him on the board with a 49 yard field goal for Tim Douglas. The long leg. And the Hawks are on the board. Time out. Gray skies and rain in Iowa City, October. Football in full swing. And the punter, Jason Baker, with Fargus back deep as the return man for the Wolverines. six penalties in the first half against Michigan. Well, now it is time for the Aflac trivia question. This week's question, who dealt Iowa its worst defeat? A hint, it was not Iowa State. 
All but for the one this year. A lot of people thought it was pretty bad. I did not want to remind them what the Cyclones did. So, Wolverine offense coming back. Play delivered to Brady over at the sideline. Williams is the running back for Michigan. Three down linemen, and uh, Brady wants to run against it. Williams sports for about a yard and a half before he is brought down. That was Raj Clark. Very intimate stadium here, Brent. Uh, fans right on top of the action. And they can get loud, and what that does is it, it really messes with the team's concentration. And also the communication part. You saw Brady turn around and actually tell uh, his tailback, Williams, what to do that time. Second and nine for Brady and the Wolverine. Williams in motion, comes across. They throw back the other way, and Iowa read the play. Strong run by Shea that time after the reception. He's a powerful runner, but the Wolverines are ahead 7-3 despite having made all kinds of mistakes today. Six penalties, three turnovers. The three turnovers were two interceptions and one fumble on a fair catch on a punt, and Lloyd Carr not happy with what's unfolding here in Iowa City today. Throws to Tuman, out of bounds, just short of that first down, I believe. It's going to be real close down there. It'll depend on the spot. Well, the marker's on the other side of the field, and it looks like it's going to be about uh, two feet short of that first down. And that would mean Michigan would have to punt if they didn't get the first down. They, I don't believe they can afford to gamble down here, leaving 7-3. Carr, a conservative short. And the gamble here is do you kick the punt, the punt to Khalil Hill? Well, a young man having a pretty good game goes out there with him on a rainy day. There's Holman on the other side. Vincent is the punter. Low snap. Just did get it off, bad punt, and out of bounds because of the low snap. Another miscue on the special teams for the Wolverines. Tom Brady and Michigan struggling, but they're still ahead, 7-3, and Carr is saying, what's going on here? Karut, I'm Brent Musburger, nice to have you along with us. The Hawkeyes with a field goal, but a chance again here. And the Wolverine 40 after the bad punt. That's the running back. Runs to Daylight on the left side. And he is smacked at the 35-yard line by Nate Miller. Well, let's talk about uh, what Jim Herman, defensive coordinator, wants to accomplish today. This uh, 74 yards or less rushing, that's about what Iowa's been averaging this year. So they probably should be able to do this. But uh, they've got to be able to control these two young receivers. We've already seen uh, Yamini get clear in the secondary on the last drive. Hawkeye blocking has improved dramatically as the game wears on. The number 46, Liddell Betts, running to daylight for another Iowa first down. And what they're doing on this series, Brent, is they're just going on the first snap count. McCann is not making any audible calls. He's getting up, lining up his uh, offensive team on the line of scrimmage and then snapping the ball and getting these guys off and getting them rolling. That was Trevor Bowlers, whom I spoke about, delivering that devastating block, number 35. The Canadian fullback who replaced one of the co-captains, Michael Berger, as a starter here in Iowa City. Now on first down, Betts behind bowlers again, cuts off his block beautifully. Folks, Iowa may have found a fullback to lead the blocking here today, and it is 250-pound Trevor Bowlers, number 35, who is leading Betts again. And Abe Price says the reason why is he's just been playing better than Michael Berger. He's a contact player. You see the big neck roll. You see the double chin strap. He's going to be leading with that, that black Hawkeye helmet. Now Berger over on the sideline. And Rob Tyne 
checks back in and Betts gets a break here. Second down and six. They'll run the draw with time. Time. First down. 15 yard line. Good call by the Hawkeye coaches upstairs, and they sent Rob Tyne onto the field to carry the draw call to McCann, and he ran it. Good job of McCann faking the pass, keeping his eyes downfield until the last moment, and then slipping it to Tyne. He gets away from a pretty good tackler in Tommy Hendricks, and then punishes the other linebacker down the field. Patterson upstairs with his head forward, calling the plays from the Hawkeye booth as he looks down. Has a great scoring chance here for the 15. First and 10, and uh, all kinds of problems with that play. Penalty flag on the play. McCann forgot he had his tight end in motion on the play and called for the snap. Prior to the snap, ball start. Yeah, normally you'd say that uh, this would put gray hairs in a coach's head, but when the coach is 70, it had been there for a long time. Well, first and 15, 15 Khalil Hill. His dad, J.D. Hill, now lives right here in Iowa City, and yes, there is still another little Hill coming along. Well, I'm told an outstanding young football player. There is Hill. That draw play again. This time they ran it with Liddell Betts, and Michigan was ready. We can remind you that ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the car's more Americans trust, Coors Light, Frost Brood, have the clean taste, the Rock, Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide, and Burger King. If you ask us, Burger King just tastes better. Second down and 15. Ball back on the 20-yard line. Jeff Doe and Kyle Trapier, the two tight ends. Can rolling the pocket complete to the 13-yard line. Put the ball in the hands of Kevin Casper, the sophomore wideout. He was the only wideout in the game on this play as Iowa goes with two tight ends. And they roll away from pressure. That's a good job by McCann here. And he throws the ball low into the outside. Excellent route by Kevin Casper. As uh, Andre Weathers nowhere near making a play on that ball. The speed now. Hill. And you meet him. They can stretch him. It's third and eight. And he find one of them. Back to the middle, incomplete. Hill was working back to the goal line that time. Heavy coverage. Well, the, the Wolverines are going to double team Khalil Hill as often as possible. There's Whitley on the outside, and the safety is going to come on the inside. There's Patman. Little bump there. That could have been called as the ball was in the air. Now the short man. They've got all kinds of kickers here at Iowa City. Zach Bromert, the senior, to attempt a 29-yarder. Michigan's lead to a single point. He does. So they settle for the field goal. And it was this draw play. McCann disguising it beautifully. Tyne did the rest. It's 7-6 Michigan. Timeout, Iowa City. So after their second field goal, the Hawkeyes, with now their punter kicking the ball, Jason Baker. And drives Williams a couple of yards deep. Right return. Smacked at the 19-yard line. Well, Michigan got off to a great start offensively when they went down and got their first touchdown on an 84-yard drive, but a couple of interceptions by Tariq Holman have uh, kept Michigan's offense in check. Brady brings the Wolverines up to the line.
Three down linemen. They switch to an over. And it's Williams. Crush. Penalty flag thrown by the umpire at the 19-yard line. Seven penalties now for Michigan. And earlier we asked you the Affleck trivia question, who dealt Iowa's worst defeat? Well, it was Michigan back in 1902, 107 to zip. I can truthfully say they covered that day, folks. <laughs> That's not fair, though. Back in 1902, the, the ball has, was full of sand, wasn't it? They put air in the ball back then, didn't they? Don't care. First down and 10. Another five yards marched off with Hayden Fry's Hawkeyes. Half the distance to go. Go first down. This is the first time for a lot of the uh, Wolverines, in fact, all but two to play here at Kinnick Stadium. And it's so different than playing at the big house there in Ann Arbor. These fans are right on top of you. They stand most of the game. They're screaming like mad, especially down on this end of the field. When you get your offense backed up against the end zone, it's very difficult. Raj Clark limped off for the Hawkeyes, injured ankle. Toss coming the other way. Williams going to try to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Picks his way, battles his way across the 20. It'll still lead the Wolverines third and long against an aroused Hawkeye team here in Iowa City. There is the injured Raj Clark. He limped off, indicating that it was a foot or an ankle injury. Did not need any assistance as he came over to the sideline. But uh, they were just a big fella who can't go. Third down and nine. Jack, what's the initial report quickly on Clark? Just a bruised knee. They'll work on it, and they'll see if he can come back in, Brent. Brady. Campman, the young whiz, has replaced it. Brady. Couldn't find an open man. He's going to be sacked from behind at the 24-yard line by Skip Miller. And Heron, Anthony Heron, receives credit for it. Tenacious job by Anthony Heron, number 99. Good job in the secondary, apparently, for the Hawkeyes. There's Heron. He beats the block of Bacchus and stays on his feet and chases the quarterback down. Almost knocked the ball away from Brady. Vincent standing back at the Wolverine five-yard line. Guys will let this one roll dead on their own 42-yard line. If you were a Michigan fan, you loved the opening drive, but not much since. Timeout. Iowa, a first down again. Hine, and he is hit and brought down from behind by Nate Miller. Let's go down to Jackaroo, Jack. Brent, a conventional shoe that college players would wear in these type of conditions or these type of spikes, limited to a half inch and only seven by the rules. But a lot of the Iowa skilled players are wearing this molded shoe. It gives you one, two, three, four, all around 15 different contact places. 
they seem right now to have a lot more traction out in this wet turf. All right, Jack, thank you. Second down and 13. Back goes McCann. Almost intercepted, and that was Sam Sword who had dropped into that intermediate zone, and it was off his hands. Sword really showing his range from his middle linebacker spot, getting that deep in the secondary. Also showing his linebacker hands. He should have picked that one off. Yeah, shaking his head. Had the last one a year ago in the Wolverine comeback. Third down and 13 for McCann and the Hawkeyes. They haven't converted a third down yet. They're 0 for 5 against the Wolverine defense. Complete and Hill was basically double teamed over here. Michigan had him very well covered using six defensive backs. And Kyle McCann's playing with a sore index finger on his right throwing hand. You can see he's having difficulty really snapping the ball off. In fact, he only practiced one day this week. Only two of six, Dan, for 27 yards here in the early going. And Whitley. And to try it again with Jason Baker, who can boom the long ball. Great hang time on this punt. Whitley fumbles it and falls on it at the 24-yard line. Hold on now. That was David Terrell. That was not Whitley back deep. That was Terrell who has replaced Whitley, and he botched that one. Let's check in on what's going on at halftime. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge with a preview. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98, interesting day in college football, especially in Columbus. Yeah, Ohio State, very impressive, like Nebraska last week. Strength to run the football, speed on the outside, great on both sides of the ball. We'll look at that and more. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98. First and ten. They run the pitch play. He's the eighth train, and he is stuck at the 25-yard line by the Hawkeyes. Bowen is there. Biggest problem, obviously, for Michigan has been these three turnovers. Two interceptions and the uh, one fumbled punt by Whitley. They're doing a good job of avoiding the three plays and out, but most of that was on their first drive. They've had a couple of years where they've had less than three plays and out because of those interceptions. David Terrell enters the formation as an extra wideout. Thomas and Tuman are substituted for. So they'll put three wideouts over on the right. And Marquise Walker is on the short side. Holman will back off and give him a little bit of a cushion. Shade around on this formation. Powers his way to the 31-yard line, and uh, this will leave the Wolverines with about a third and three. And updating Bob Elliott's goals. Uh, we would like to see both these numbers improve. The important thing is that the score is just 7-6. The four pack of wide receivers still on the field for third and three, and the shotgun this time for Brady. Whistle dead prior to the snap. Hey, you almost think that it was too easy on that first drive for Michigan. Since then, a whole bunch of uh, turnovers and penalties in this first half. Unbelievable. Prior to the snap, ball start, off bench, five yards, third down. That is the ninth penalty against Carr's Wolverines here. That is number nine. They had eight coming in. That'll give the coach something to talk about at halftime, don't you think? I guess. <laughs> or yell about it. Yeah. Third down and eight after the penalty. Brady looking right. Almost intercepted on that far side by Jeff Kramer, the rush end who had backed off. And Jeff Kramer won't have an easier interception. Ball had to be wet. You know his hands are wet. He's a linebacker. If he picks that ball off, he might have scored. 
Now, will Jansen deliver a good snap to his punter? That's going to be the critical part. A couple of low snaps. <laughs> the right side, fair catch. Call for at the 45 yard line by Hill. And we have a minute and two seconds left here in the first half. Another bad punt for Michigan, only 29 yards. And again, Iowa's going to have excellent field position with three timeouts and a minute to go. Well, it is the veteran inside linebacker, number 93, Sam Sword, who is saving the day for the Wolverines. Slowed by injuries early in the season. He is now rounding into good physical condition, and he has been the player of the day here in the first half for them defensively. And they've been tested, especially with his field position against them. Now McCann will see if he can get the speed deep. Yamini and Hill from the short side. Shotgun. McCann shakes away. Can he find anybody open? Back across the green. He's got the fullback. And rumbling is Trevor Bowlers to the 30-yard line. They threw it up on a sandlot like that. And McCann calls his first time out, which is really a smart thing to do after a long play like that. But the one adjective that Hayden Fry uses to describe his young quarterback, Kyle McCann, is that he's unflappable. And he reminds him of the man who's talking to him right now. Chuck Long, the quarterback coach on the sidelines. This is just a great play by McCann, keeping his wits about himself as he gets away from foot on this uh, blitz there on the outside. His head is down the field looking for receivers, and he finds his fullback of all people. Great job of staying alive. This is what the defense was looking at. The pressure from the left side is number 17 foot. He can't wrap up the 195 pound McCann. I like the way he's just searching for a receiver instead of looking to run. This is a huge play for the Hawkeyes. A 35 yard pass play to Trevor Bowlers. Now one timeout remaining for Iowa. They have 49 seconds. Remember they've got a leg. So the one thing the Hawkeyes want to avoid here with the wind at their back a little bit they do not want to turn it over. They've got 49 seconds of one timeout. They need the timeout to get the field goal team on the field. They've got a red shirt freshman. They've got Douglas, the long man, Romer, the short man, getting ready here late. McCann, don't want to take a sack. He fires underneath the hill. Hill in the foot race. First down. Clock will stop. 42 seconds left on the clock, and Hill dashes inside the 15-yard line. A 15-yard gain with Sam Sword in pursuit. This is really smart. Get your speed, man, on a crossing route. They'll bring Hill all the way across the field here. Good protection for McCann. Now watch the speed as he picks up 5, 10, and almost 15 yards after the catch. Liddell Betts steps in. So again, the clock is started. Inside of 30 seconds now with one timeout to go from the 15-yard line. There's that draw play. Betts bangs to the 11-yard line with 20 seconds to go. And there's the timeout, Iowa. Using their last timeout perfectly here with 18 seconds to go. And they have the ball right in the middle of the field now, too. But the question is, will Hayden Fry elect to give his quarterback a couple of shots at throwing the ball into the end zone. Let's check in with Jack Aroot, Jack. When 13 years ago this weekend, a young man came to an Iowa game and watched his mentor do a bootleg into the end zone to go undefeated as they went on their way to the Rose Bowl. That man later became the quarterback coach for this young man, and he sat right here that day. His name, Kyle McCann. And here he is now with 18 seconds to go in the first half and Chuck Long tutoring him on the sideline. 
Long won a memorable game here back in 85. It's the last time Iowa beat Michigan in Iowa City. Rob Houghton's last second field goal, winning at 12-10 in a battle of one Iowa against two Michigan. Now with 18 seconds to go, and Zach Bromer will attempt the field goal, so the decision is made with a young quarterback. Let's try to take the lead right away. Jason Baker, the punter, is the holder, and Michigan with a timeout here. Well, we have an opportunity. Let's uh, check in on some upcoming ABC programs. In their first lead over favored Michigan, the Iowa Hawkeyes, who were dominated in the early minutes of this football game, now attempting their third field goal or making their fourth. They missed one, remember, early. Hit their next two. This is their fourth attempt. And Gromer boosts the Hawkeyes ahead. Check in on a message from the NCAA. 15 seconds remaining and young Aaron Kaufman wears number 55 he's out there on the special team this is about to become a very big second half because just a few moments ago the man he'll now replace Raj Clark was taken off the field injured knee now Kaufman 6'4 235 a very highly recruited young man is going to get a big test under fire and if Campman can hold up the ground fielded by the short man out to the 41 yard line with nine seconds with Mark Campbell and the clock is stopped by the Mark Wolverines the kick to the 42 yard line just a disastrous second quarter for Michigan Brent three possessions all three plays and punch The man's got some regrouping to do. What they ought to do is get the videotape out and see how they went 84 yards with their first drive. They'll show the second half of their comeback a year ago. Remember, it was 21-7 Iowa. The Wolverines stormed back, overcoming their biggest deficit of a perfect season. Brady, right sideline, streets turned around, out of bounds. Two ticks of the clock left. It's a Rick Holman, the junior corner, with two interceptions Incomplete. for the Hawkeyes here in the first half. And that uh, going into the ball game, that was one of the major concerns for Bob Elliott. Uh, how well would would his corners, Holman and Slattery, hold up against these uh, big play receivers of Michigan? Well, Holman's holding up pretty good. We have yet to see Slattery get much action. The last play of the first half. Intent to run it out. Strong run by number 36, Aaron Shea. And Hawkeye fans love it. They were very pessimistic coming into this game, but they lead it at the intermission 9-7. Let's send you now to John Saunders and Todd Blackley. Gentlemen. Iowa leads minutes ago inside the Hawkeye locker room with Coach Hayden Fry. Defense, you're doing a super job. You got to raise it to another level, defense. What you got to do is score. You're doing a heck of a job on turnovers. You're doing a heck of a job on turnovers and stop. Now, let's try to score, defense. Try to score. Hey, offense, you're improving. You're getting a lot better. You're getting a lot better. But we've got to put together some drives and keep the ball away from it. We've got to take advantage of the field position. You're just so close to putting it in the end zone. We've got to 
We can't be settling for field goals. Everybody ready to go out and play a half? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Let's do it, boys. Let's do it. And on the way out, the Hawkeye sign went ahead at the half. The game belongs to the Hawks. Damn house. If the defense starts to score, Michigan's going to be in a lot of trouble here this right. afternoon, my you friend. Gotta, you got to love Aiden Fry. Encouraging his offense, too. Say they're only this close from really getting things done. But I love the part about uh, getting the defense to score. They've got three turnovers, and they've got great field position throughout that first half. Iowa handles the ball to start the second half. At 9-7 on three field goals, short kickoff. Going to be fielded at the 20-yard line. And the tight end, Kyle Trapier, brings him up. And, uh, Dan, how about adjustments for Michigan? Well, this, the penalties have just killed them, as have the turnovers. But they got to get back to Michigan football. Run the ball. They've been averaging 4.3 yards per carry, and that's what they got to get back to. Iowa on offense is doing just absolutely terrible on third down. As we take a look at the Morgan Stanley Dean Witter staff. And then here you got the turnovers and the opponent's points, and those penalties show up real ugly for Michigan. Kyle McCann. Redshirt freshman at quarterback. Bowler ran powerfully after receiving that pass. Was their offensive leader. They had four different men caught a pass, but Bowler's had more yards than anybody well, in the first half. Yeah, he had that one great reception after McCann ran around. Vets uh, looks healthier than I thought he would be. Playing on a bad groin and on a bad field. Short of the first down, it was Jed Dull, the junior tied in, and Sam Sword, who dominated defensively in the first half, picks up with still another stop. He's getting real close to 300 tackles in his career. This is a real good sign, though, for Iowa to come up with a third down and short, and maybe, just maybe, they'll be able to convert their first time. Eight tackles already for sword in this game. Now third and one. Bowler's the fullback. Stop. Michigan stopped him. The left side of the defense would not yield that time. And the defense has been led by both inside linebacker Sam Sword and James Hall, the rush linebacker. He's got in on one sack, but Sword is the story again for Michigan. They're going back with James Whitley as a return man. Jason Baker, there is Whitley. They tried Terrell once. He fumbled also. So Whitley will open here as the return man in the second half for the Wolverines. Returnable from the 29. And slips at the 35. Second half in Iowa City on a rainy, gray Saturday afternoon. The Big Ten season now in full swing. Timeout. Defensively for the Hawkeyes, Raj Clark returns in the 44. Williams searches daylight for the Wolverines. And a penalty flag comes flying. Eric Thigpen, the free safety, making the stop, but there was a flag. be another one uh, against Michigan and it's holding by a wide receiver this just kills the first play they get off to a great start with Williams on the taut sweep and they get it called back because of holding downfield the 10th penalty against the Wolverines there's the holding right there Marcus Knight holding on to uh, the uh, defensive back and, and drilling him. That's just a killer. Another penalty against Michigan. First and 12. The Hawkeye corners back off. Brady comes, got it. Crosses midfield. Hits Ty Streets, who scored the Wolverine touchdown for 20 yards, and it's a first down. Without question, the best throw of the day for Tom Brady as he's got the uh, 
wide receiver on the post batter. Watch him step forward and get it over the linebackers in perfect stride to tie streets. Clutch play after the holding call. Williams searches in the middle. Slams across the 45-yard line into the arms of Matt Hughes. How the two quarterbacks are doing here today. And you can see Tom Brady, but he's had two picks by Holman. McCann has been unable to get the Hawkeyes into the end zone, but he has not thrown an interception in this game. And I must say that the Michigan offensive line is doing a fine job of blocking Jared DeVries, number 94, the all-world defensive lineman. Jansen, 6'7", 299 pounds, has been matched against him most of the day. The A train, Anthony Thomas in now. Penalty flag down. Anthony Thomas with ball carrier. Tom Brady has something to cheer about because this one's not against his ball club. And Matt Hughes. Violating that neutral zone as they came across. That's a good job by the quarterback of changing up his snap count and inducing that defense into the neutral zone. Offside, defense, five yards, still second down. But it's second down and one now as a result of the second down. Down. As Jeff Kramer and Hughes and his teammates get ready. From the Iowa 38. Williams, a late substitute. They're going to send him out wide to the right, and Thomas is back out. down at one and Brady middle incomplete Tooman the intended receiver he overthrew him that time and Holman the young man from New Jersey with two interceptions on the day is there defensively again and defensively for Iowa you see it this is not a good sign when DBs are your leading tacklers that means they're coming up uh, from the secondary and having to make tackles on running plays as well as fast plays. Williams is the running back. Brady. Brady on the quarterback's team. Tries to sneak for it. He was burrowing in there pretty good. Got the first down. Well, the Home Depot coaches back. Hayden Fry, you know, while he was the head coach down at SMU in Dallas, he became the first coach to integrate the Southwest Conference in 1963 by playing wide receiver Jerry Levias. And here he is for SMU, back of the end zone against Texas A&M. And folks, all kinds of things about Jerry Levias. He caught my partner Dan Fouts' first ever touchdown pass in the NFL. Now Brady snaps it off, and it is complete. Hitting Marcus Knight, who was working back for about eight yards. And the other thing, the tight end was our producer on that uh, team, and that would be Bob Goodrich. So we've got all kinds of connections with Hayden Fry and Jerry Levias here, Dan. And Bob Goodrich was open on that play, and the quarterback, for some reason, threw it to Bunny Levias. <laughs> I was always looking for him, too, and I want to thank him for catching that first touchdown pass of mine back in 1973. Second down and three. Here's the toss. Here's Thomas. Not going to get it. The breeze cleans up on the play, but it was Jeff Kramer who came across and disrupted it. Number 19. And you can hear the boos from the crowd, Brent, and I think they're booing. In uh, the fact, watch our man Jansen right out here. Number 77. He's going to reach out for the linebacker. And he's going to hold him, and he's going to get away with it. Jeff Kramer, number 19. That's an unbelievable non-call. Third down and six. Brady in trouble. Sack. Smash. DeVries. The all-time sack master in Iowa City comes free. 36 career sacks for Jared DeVries, number 94. And Michigan tries to block him with the fullback, Ray Jackson. Bad play design there. Benson to punt. The dangerous one, Khalil Hill, son of J.D., back deep. A snap 
delivered by Jansen. High fair catch the signal. At the seven yard line, the catch is made. So here is Jared DeVries. Next stop, next year, Monday afternoon, folks. Time out. First starting field position of the day for the Iowa Hawkeyes, who lead Michigan 9-7 with nine minutes to go in the third quarter. The Hawkeyes coming out from the shadow of their end zone. Bowlers and Betts. Betts, big block, but a penalty flag is thrown on the play. Penalty flag is thrown by the umpire. to make uh, mistakes with penalties. But one of the reasons that uh, Jared DeVries will be playing on Sundays next week, Brent, watch the athletic ability here as he cl comes free and then hurdles Ray Jackson, then punishes the quarterback. Watch Brady's head. Man, that hurts. Mm. It's here good. Look at the sacks. The yardage lost and then tackles for loss. Yeah, that's that's over 600 yards. Look at that. I, I would have added it up, but I couldn't pass it up, right? <laughs> well, they got to try to do it again, and here comes that's now swinging wide to the left, looking for daylight. Smashes his way to the 12 yard line. What the Hawkeyes have been trying to find this year. Liddell Betts, the red shirt freshman, running hard for nine yards. He's running hard in two straight plays. Especially when the Hawkeyes need it most to get off their own uh, goal line and get some breathing room. Back in second and five. Defense going to be so critical here the rest of the way. It's pretty good tackle distribution. That's the normal. Your linebackers should be your leading tacklers. The red shirt freshman looking at a second and five. The Wolverines trying to get a turnover. Jones indicating he's coming. And they sealed it up that time. Nothing doing against the Wolverine D. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. The Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And sleep in. How was your sleep last night, Mr. Fowler? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, sir. 300 tackles. Sam Sword. Third down and six. The draw play again. Michigan ready for it. Betts battling, but nowhere to go. And Michigan not fooled that time in the front. Tommy Hendricks, number 41 there. Fine junior free safety in the middle of that action. And Iowa forced a punt. So the penalty, the holding call. Help stymie. Michigan in the front, Jason and get out the VCR, Sam Sword, because this is your 300th career tackle in your great career at Michigan. <laughs> Behind Baker, off the side of the foot. Big hop to Whitley. Running far side, and fumble! Oh, football! Whitley turns it over again! about to go out of bounds and another crucial mistake by James Whitley. Now Whitley's got to shake it off and play defense. That's what's critical here. He had an alley over on the right-hand side. But D.J. Johnson over there to wrap it up. And it's first and 10 coming out from the 33. Play fake. McCann. Penalty flag thrown again. And a great run by Betts. But there's a penalty fumble. He got it back. But the referee threw a penalty flag back at the 25-yard line. 
It was a 33-yard play, and the Hawkeyes are walking slowly all the way back. And because it's holding, and it's because it's from the point of the foul, this is a huge penalty. Thrown deep in the backfield as McCann was moving around. Another critical mistake for the Hawkeyes. Oh my. You can just feel the agony huh, on that sideline. Both of them. This game is a coach's worst nightmare. Now you know both of them are going to lobby a little bit and see if they can get an advantage somewhere down the line if they can. Carr was doing it over there on the far side. And now it's up to the Silver Fox Hayden to try it over here. In trouble. Yard line sacked by Jones, number 55. Three sacks for the Wolverines following a half dozen a week ago. Remember, this defense pitched a shutout in the second half against the Spartans back in Ann Arbor. There's Jim Herman, the man who calls the plays over on that far side for the Wolverines. He hasn't been blessed with the same kind of defense that he had a year ago but they're doing just fine right now in the second half this is second down and 38 and going up against a uh, freshman quarterback Herman's going to throw a lot of different looks at him Weathers and Whitley back off on the corners here comes sword trying to step inside and time is stopped slammed at the seven yard line Hall was in on that play for the Wolverines and Patman came up from the strong safety spot. Last week they had a pretty good day. No sacks against Illinois, but uh, it's back to the norm, averaging about four per game. And a lot of that is the indecision of uh, Kyle McCann as well as the offensive line just not holding up. Michigan is going to give him a lot of different looks in the second half. Give that zone blitz look and then come after him with everybody. Johanny Jones with the last sack. So back all the way up to the six yard line with a third and 37. Make a reverse coming out of the end zone. Michigan bought it for a second and exploding his best. Well, it didn't earn a first down. Something going on down there on the sideline now. Renus in pursuit. You can see that they are living. Judging from the body language down there. You got a hurt Michigan player down there as well. Wayne Patman slow getting up. But the Hawkeyes really wanted a late hit called there after a great play, the faking the reverse in your own goal line. standing right there not throwing the flag here is Jason Baker Ty Streets the third punt return man and he'll just let this one roll dead so the Wolverines use their third punt returner he got a timeout it's a defensive battle nine seven our guys lead it fairness to Michigan I really think second view this is a good non call now watch the running back we see him from this angle step out of bounds Betts doesn't know he's out of bounds he's going to keep on battling as he comes out of there that's when Michigan comes in to make sure that he's down and I say to the officials there the field judge was right there good non call now Wolverines take it on over here with 407 left in the third and they're trailing by two Aaron Shea discussing it there with Tom Brady. Crowd 
throws louder. Take by Brady, buys time, rolls the pocket drop by Campbell. You know, last year, that was such a big play. Greasy rolling on the naked boot leg, finding Tooman over the middle. This is our, our third game we've done with Michigan this year, Brent, the Syracuse game, last week's MSU game. And uh, they keep throwing the bootleg to Campbell. And my question is, why? Why not go back to Jeremy Tooman? Clearly the better player. Exactly. Second and ten. Walker and Terrell, the two freshmen. It's a four pack of wide receivers for the Wolverines. By the middle of that defense, Aaron Klein, the defensive lineman. So now our schedule for next week is coming into focus. Paterno and Penn State head into Minneapolis, into the dome, to take on the Golden Gophers of Glenn Mason. But we've got also other games coming your way with regional coverage. We will do Notre Dame, Arizona State. Many of you will see that game. 3.30 next Saturday. Third down in seven. Coming off the corner, the ball down on the ground. Hawkeyes, the breeze indicating that the Hawkeyes have got a fumble. But the umpire said no, Michigan. But that was on third down to help bring out the punting team. So the Hawkeyes will get the ball back. The one thing they have not been able to do today is convert into points for turnovers. Just three points to go for it. Almost got their fifth right there. Say that he just whipped on a wet ball. That's what happened at that center that time. Steve Brady got it out of there. Yeah. So here's fourth down. Need a snap. That's <laughs> it. Booms one. Oh, to the nine-yard line. Trapped and smacked at the 11. Great coverage. Good punt off a fine snap. That's only a three yard return on a 51 yard punt and it'll be bad field position again for the Hawkeyes in the conclusion of the game. We'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player from each team and in recognition Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. Michigan has rushed for only 83 yards against this Iowa defense today. Iowa's rushed for only 62 yards. Iowa's been real good, Brett, uh, taking care of the ball. No turnovers yet. Biggest difference in the game, Betts cut back, and Betts becoming the man for the Hawkeyes. And a fumble! They indicate Michigan on a late call. That line judge is saying it was not down. Sam Sword has got to be there in the middle of this. He's being congratulated. He had the ball. Nate wants to know what happened. Was Betts down? Here's Sword searching out the ball carrier, fights off the block, and I bet he just rips the ball away. There it goes. Great play by Sam Sword with his left hand ripping the ball away from Betts. Now Tom Brady and the offense go to work inside the 20. Red zone attack, Michigan. Chance to take the lead. Williams flashes right. Chris sees stop. He's fumbled. Iowa's got it back. Back to back fumbles. Matt Bowen came up from a strong safety spot, made the tackle, and then he stripped the ball from Clarence Williams. Jeff Kramer on the spot recovers it. The fifth turnover of the afternoon for the Wolverines. Williams twisting, trying to get an extra yard. And just as he was going down, the ball comes free, and Kramer's on it. Now, Kyle McCann and the Hawkeyes, and it's the Michigan defensive turn. What a defensive struggle this is here this afternoon. McCann off to the side, and that is complete Austin Wheatley's first reception of the game. No yards, though. 
give him credit for completing the pass, but uh, you got to give your receiver a chance to run with it after you throw it to him. Ball was thrown low, and Wheatley had to go down to make the catch. Betts returns, along with wideout Ryan Barton for the Hawks. Second and 10, 143, third quarter. Jones going to come. Picked up by the running back. Diving reception and a penalty flag comes late. McCann went down. McCann was hit by Tommy Hendricks, the free safety, and the penalty flag thrown by the referee. Tommy Hendricks is going to come and hit the quarterback. Actually, it's right in his face. And Hendricks should have seen the ball leave the quarterback's hands and pulled off the quarterback. On the defense. That's tucked on to the end of the run. First down. We talked about the weather being a factor coming into this one. Surprising that it would affect Michigan to this extent. And now again, they've had really unseasonable weather there in Ann Arbor in the 80s until just the end of this week. Ball comes all the way out to the 38-yard line. Hawkeyes on first down into the middle. Here's Hill trying to get him space, and they can't. Only the gain of about a yard. Well, uh, Jack Kyle McCann trying to grow up right in front of us here today. Well, Brent and Dan Fouts may have touched upon something that's an advantage to Kyle McCann. This weather is what you would say in thoroughbred racing, suitable for a mutter. Well, according to Kyle McCann's a sports editor from his local hometown in Iowa, he said over a third of the games that Kyle McCann played in high school were in precisely this exact same weather. And he said, hey, McCann is a mutter. Now we know why Gail Sayers was so great. Second down and seven. Black side pressure, McCann doesn't feel it. And down he goes as number 56, James Hall, comes crushing in. And it's again, it's another blitz by Michigan. We're seeing it almost every down now that uh, Iowa has to throw the ball. James Hall with the pressure that time. And it's clear that Jim Herman, defensive coordinator for Michigan, says, hey, we're going to go after this guy. Hope that he'll throw one up for grabs and we'll pick it off. We come to the end of three. The last time that Iowa beat Michigan here was in 85. They kicked four field goals and won at 12-10. Back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Leading 9-7. And take a look at the difference a year makes for the defense. All of last year, Jim Herman's defense allowed 114 total points. Now, through four, They've allowed 120. Only three field goals here today, and they come out with Iowa facing a third and 14. Bowlers and Tyne, the running backs. And in front. Michigan overloaded defensively. Jordan stepped up in there to help seal it off. And Freisinger, the outstanding sophomore, crushing across the line. I'm not sure what that play was supposed to be, Brent, but I know it certainly looked ugly. It can look like he wanted to run the option play there. Back again as a return man is Ty Screes. Whitley fumbled twice. Terrell fumbled once. So Tuesday night after Spin City, another brand new episode of the show that the critics are calling the best new comedy of the year from the writer of A Few Good Men. Go behind the scenes to where the real life happens on sports night, Tuesday at 9.30, 8.30 Central here on ABC. It's been that kind of afternoon for Jones and the defense. Hard work and hard hit Midwest football game. Over on a wing. 
Jay in behind Brady. Brady going to open with a pass hit as he released. He was going to go to Shea, and Jared DeVries climbed all over him. DeVries doesn't get the sack this time, but he jumps inside David Grant that time and affects the pass. And Shea was wide open. It is likely that Brady would have put the ball right in his hands if he had not been hit by DeVries. As the eye knows this is the money for It's down opposite Jansen and ready to go to war again. Toss play. Here comes Thomas stretching it out. Nothing doing. Campman, Aaron Campman, the freshman from Iowa who was so heavily recruited, runs him down on that far side. Could be the next outstanding linebacker here at Iowa. And right now you're seeing the, the Michigan offensive leaders right now. This production is way down for the receivers, and this right here has got to be improved upon. Michigan with only two first downs since the opening quarter. The Wolverines face a third and eight. Pressure hit as he releases incomplete. Ryan Lofton. That time defensively all over the quarterback. And the young the true freshman, Andy Campman, also getting in on the pressure. There's Lofton 48 here. He gets by on Backus and just thrills Brady. Tom Brady is taking a beating today. Jansen needs to deliver another good snap. Been much more efficient the last few punts. Tucks it into his hands. Ah, zooming on fair catch signal. Now Holman's going to let it drop. Holman did not want to risk the fumble on it, and it'll roll down to the 21 yard line. This is a 48 yard punt. No time to be a freshman. This is Michigan, the fourth quarter. We'll continue. Their coach, the defensive line, you got to have fire in your belly. You Listen to John Austin. You don't want to throw it downfield. Just beat the guy one on one. If that's one guy, just keep coming after him, okay? Great job on hustling over that run to the outside, okay? You slam it into it, fly to that football. That's what we need to do. Keep playing harder. Keep playing harder, man. Keep playing harder from the sidelines. We bring you that insight. And now, the freshman quarterback, Kyle McCann, goes back to work, seeing if he can eat up some time, if nothing else. The fullback, Bowlers, out to the 26th. Damn, he's been pretty efficient. He really has. And, and the thing is, the coach has said that, you know, he's basically a blocker and everything, but we may let him carry the ball once or twice today. He's been a big player for Iowa. I just love watching the coach on the sidelines like that. He was talking about getting after Tom Brady and knocking him down, intimidate him, keep going after him, hit him, and knock him down, and maybe he'll throw it up for grabs. Second and five. Split back work. Two wideouts. Michigan jumps late. They hit McCann on the release. Incomplete. Check in now on UCLA. Let's send you to New York and John Saunders. Brent, in the Burger King play of the day, I know you love this guy, Brent. Take a look at the effort here. I'm sure Bob Toledo, not necessarily enamored of this play, but just the same. Cade McNown gets it to the end zone for the touchdown. UCLA rolling over Washington State, 35 to 10. Take a look at those numbers in the red zone. 14 of 14, impressive enough, but all touchdowns. Oh, yeah, John. He's our kind of guy. Reminds me of the snake. Third down. Five yards to go from the can and the Hawks. Nothing doing. That was big 99. Jake Feisinger. What a future he's got. And uh, Jack, what do we hear about the Honey Jones down there, partner? Well, Brent, the athletic trainers for Michigan have taken him to the locker room. It seems that he has injured his knee, 
but they seem to think that once they can put a special kind of foam brace on him, he'll be able to return to action. That remains to be seen. If I was Michigan, I'd go after one of these punts. Let's see what happens here. Here's the high streets. And it takes an Iowa bounce. Down at the 41-yard line. 38-yard punt for Baker. 11.50 to go. Welcome to Big Ten football in October. Garrett DeVries. Slowed early. But like all the great ones, Dan, he just keeps coming and coming. And you see they're moving him around on the offensive line. This time he's inside. He gets a hit on the quarterback. Now he comes from the right side. Four tackles and a sack. And empties the bucket on every snap, as my old buddy Dick Vermeer would say. First down and 10 in the eighth frame. Anthony Thomas. Back in for the Wolverines. Big toss. An open man got the tight end that time, and Campbell hangs on. Brady's pass to Mark Campbell, late out of bounds at midfield. So this will leave Coach Carr and the Wolverines with second and one yard for a first down. They are 50 yards away from taking a lead. 11:46. And you know, I like that call on first down. They've been running the ball pretty well, so fake the run and throw the play action. Give Brady a little better time to throw. Come back, explodes, middle twist to the 35 yard line. Anthony Thomas for 15 more yards, and Eric Thickpen saves the touchdown. Now you expect Michigan to start getting it going sometime, and they're going right up the middle. Just sealing off the inside there, and Thomas uses his power, picks up a big first down. Shea, open field. First out of bounds inside the 25 yard line. Another first down. 13 more yards. Big pin forced to make still another stop. Iowa may be forced to gamble here defensively, Dan. Well, Mike DeBoard really likes the versatility of Aaron Shea. He's their most versatile fullback. He blocks well, but he's a deceiving runner, a long strider. Of course, he catches the ball well out of the backfield. Very versatile. Bob Elliott, the defensive coordinator. Three down linemen. They stay on the ground. A whistle. I believe the whistle blew early, and they're going to mark it down before the ball came free, and that's exactly what happened. But it has been turnovers plaguing Carr and Michigan today. The fumbled punt got it started. Then two interceptions by Holman on Brady. And Whitley coughs it up again. And Williams twisting and battling gives it away. That's five. Second down and nine for Brady. Trying to make it pay off this time with Shea. Crossing the 20 yard line. Aaron Klein. With the stop. Big effort guy, Aaron Klein, as uh, it seems like the entire Hawkeye defense. They just refuse to get beat. They stay on their feet. They run to the ball. And then when they get to the ball carry, they're trying to rip it away from them. Aaron Kempman, the freshman, walks back into the defense for the Hawkeyes. This is third and seven. Catching the ball as he goes out of bounds for a first down at the 10 yard line. Now, usually you see the uh, wide receivers with the great control with their feet, but watch Tooman. Great concentration here. Watch the toe drag. Take my words for it. He got him in. Only needs one. There it is. That's that right foot. Oh, yeah. 
That was real close. First down and 10. The ball on the 10 yard line. Thomas marches ahead. Stopped at about the 7 yard line on that first down carry. Make it second down and goal. Coming up for the Wolverines. Let's take another look at Tuman. It is the right foot that becomes the issue, and it looked like he got it down, but it was really close. Got it down. No question. Got it down. Second down and goal. Knight and three. Williams back in the game. Gives him a little more speed. They're stretching it out defensively, and Slattery goes after him. It's third and goal. Great play by Joe Slattery. Slattery working on the outside as a cornerback has got to fight off the block of the wide receiver. Here it is right here. Watch as the play comes over here. Watch the play of Joe Slattery. Marcus Knight, he drills, knocks him over, and then keeps leverage and knocks Williams out of bounds. A year ago, it was Brian Greasy, and it was Jeremy Tooman into the end zone. Tooman goes down on the left side of the formation. Here's your third and goal, nine yard line. Quick, drops it underneath, no touchdown. Fourth and goal from the five yard line. Coleman, who has intercepted two passes, makes the tackle at the five. Jay Feely trots on for Coach Carr. Attempting to give the Wolverines a one-point advantage with eight and a half minutes to go. This will be a 22-yard field goal. Brady, the quarterback, to put it down. You've got a perfect view. Got it. Ten nine. Here was Brady. As Tuman makes the big play in the game. The Wolverines up a point. Time out. It is eerie being here today with Iowa with three field goals and Michigan with 10 points. And the last time that Iowa beat them here was on four field goals, beating them 12-10 with two seconds. Rob Houghton nailed the game winner. This was the scene. The Hawkeyes were number one in the country. Michigan was number two. It was Howland. Artificial turf in those days in Iowa City, and he nailed it. The final was 12-10. The quarterback that day, the young man by the name of Chuck Long. And now Chuck wearing the headset, striding that sideline, the quarterback coach here at Iowa. Could wind up being a fine head coach someday. First down and 10. Kyle McCann. Got an open man. And through the double cover, he's late, incomplete. And we'll ship you to New York for an update. John Saunders. Brent Stanford against the Irish and Notre Dame's Jarius Jackson had a terrific day. Keeps it here on the option and goes 22 yards for the touchdown. The easy win, 35-17. Next week, some of you will see the Irish face Arizona State at 3.30 Eastern time. Brent, back to you. All right, John, you heard it is 10-9. Michigan with a one-point lead and 8-12 to go. Rob Tyne checks into the backfield on second and 10 for the Hawks. Has good time, can't find anybody open. And down he goes at the 21 yard line, picking up a yard in the arms of Rob Renus, along with Eric Wilson. I'm not sure he was looking down the field that time. It looked like once he didn't find his 
primary receiver, his eyes went to the pass rush instead of staying in the secondary, looking for a hole uh, to pick up yardage on the ground. A stifling Wolverine defense here in the second half. A lot like they were last week against Michigan State. You heard Hayden at halftime. Now his assistance. The defense has to score. That's the way it looks. Here's third down. And got him. First down. Big pass to Boucher Yamini. That's a huge play for Kyle McCann and for these fans and for this offense. He's real slow getting back to pass, but watch as he steps forward, comes over the top and throws a bullet to Yamini. And when you got those track stars, you want to make sure you don't have to stretch them out over the middle. Sometimes they get real short arms. Great pass by McCann. Picked a good time for his first third down conversion. Seven minutes to go here in the ball game. The fullback bowlers. Not much doing. Jack Root. Well, Brent, if this does boil down to a kick by Tim Douglas, it may be exactly an answer to his prayers. Just moments ago, as I was walking behind the bench, he grabbed me, and he said, this is the day I've dreamed about since I was a little kid. He says now the whole key is to stay loose, and if Hayden Fry calls on him, he says, I'll put it through the uprights. The young man with three 50-yarders in Champaign last week, 58 was the long one. Second down and nine. McCann deep drop. Fires incomplete. His receiver dull tripping at midfield. And here was the young man. Danny. Uh, he really moved this one, did he? Well, the wind was blowing pretty good, too. This was a 58-yarder, so give him credit for making it. But remember, all his long kicks last week were on artificial turf with a strong wind behind him. He needs about 40 yards. Uh, the Hawkeye offense has to move it about 40 yards to get him within a 50-yard range. He made one from 49 today, but missed one from 52. Here's your third down and nine in timeout with a penalty flag prior to the timeout. A penalty flag was thrown. And it's that illegal substitution again. Twelve men in the huddle. The question is, did McCann get a chance to call timeout before the flag was thrown? The answer? We have a timeout requested. Timeout requested before the penalty. Timeout, Iowa. And the answer? Yes, he did. <laughs> we'll be right back to Iowa City. Huddle, and uh, he's going to go running off the field. The flag is thrown, and now McCann realizes it and calls timeout. This is a bad call by the officials. Here is third and nine. McCann in trouble again. Going to run for it. No, not close. He had maize and blue all over his face at the 35-yard line. He's lucky he wasn't killed on that play. Getting up a little groggy. He took quite a hit that time from about three Wolverines. Jason Baker to tie streets. The third punt return man used by Coach Carr in Michigan here today. Five streets back. Penalty flag thrown by the field judge. We have a penalty on the play. It's a 43 yard punt with a one yard return. This is going to back up the Wolverines inside their 20. Well, a reminder, Sunday night on ESPN, Warren Moon in Seattle go to Kansas City after a tough trip into Pittsburgh. But this is a tough Seattle team this year. Meanwhile, is Minnesota for real. Dennis Green's had trouble up at Green Bay. We'll see how the Vikings respond against Brett Favre and the Packers on Monday night. Game really turning into a game of field position as we come to the close here with five and a half to go. 
Maybe what Hayden Fry said at halftime about his defense needing to score off a turnover. And they're thinking about now. There's the illegal block. That's the freshman blocker. So the ball is put down at the 11-yard line, coming out here with first and 10. Thomas gets the first carry, plows behind the right side, and is stopped at the 15-yard line, picked up about three yards on first down here for Michigan. 5.23 to go. Iowa has used its first of three timeouts. The Wolverines with all three in the game, and Michigan leading it by a point. That's how critical that 12-minute uh, the huddle play was just moments ago because it cost Iowa a very, very valuable timeout. Remember what the Iowa coaches have been preaching. Defense has to score. Coleman and Slatterday out of the corners. Will the Wolverines risk a pass here in second and six? Going to keep it on the ground. Fumble! No, they whistle. Iowa thought it was down. The linesman said, I blew the whistle. Important thing to look at is where are Thomas's knees when the ball comes out? Clearly down. So here's third and two. But the emphasis this year has been on allowing that play and allowing the defense to get the turnover. Thomas still the running back. He'll try for it. He's got it. 25. Cross the 30-yard line. 3.58. Fresh set of downs for the Wolverines. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built for tough. Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping people live safer, more secure lives. That's the freedom of liberty. And Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. The ball at the Michigan 33-yard line. Third to freeze, and the seniors need to make a play. Michigan will try to kill the ball. Shea, the ball carrier. Shea to the 36. Now, I was got to be thinking about when do they use their last two timeouts. Well, the one advantage you get in the college game is that the clock stops on a first down. That's the good news. The problem is Iowa hasn't had many first downs here today. Count seven against Michigan's 13. Iowa with only 159 yards of offense for Hayden Fry. Michigan with 274. Second and six. Stop behind the line that time, and it was number 98, Eddie Sadat, the junior who's been improving as the season progresses. The Hawkeyes will use one of their two remaining timeouts. Thomas trots over to the sideline along with Brady. You can tell by looking at the Michigan jerseys what kind of a game we have had here this afternoon in Iowa City. Of course, a reminder that the thrifty car rental post-game report will be coming up at the end of this game. We've got 3.02 on the clock, so it certainly seems like John and Todd will be able to update you on everything, give you the lineup for next Saturday afternoon now that it's all set. Big question now for Michigan on offense is do they risk the pass or do they go with the running play? Last time they had a third down, they ran the ball behind John Chanson and Jeremy Tooman on the right side, and Thomas picked up a huge first down. They'll keep Anthony on the field. They cannot risk a Clarence Williams fumble at this point. Third down and six at the 302 mark. Hawkeyes 
Hughes need a stop. Hughes gets ready. Ready to throw for it. Got a man straight. First down, Michigan. Seventeen yards. Tom Brady was impressive in the fourth quarter last week against Michigan State. This is a great pass by Brady as he hangs in the pocket and waits for Streets to run the corner route. This ball is right on the money, right before Bowen could get to him. Good pass protection on DeVries. Great job that time by David Brandt, number 67. First and ten. The A train. Well, I wonder if that game we're going to be watching over at the Vine a little bit later, down from the southeast, going to be as entertaining as this one when we watch the Georgia Bulldogs Perhaps. saddle up against LSU. Perhaps a little more scoring. Yeah, huh? You know, you'll never convince me that uh, defensive games are, are as exciting as high-scoring offensive games. But I like kind of like this one today, Brent. A lot of emotion out here today from both sides. Second and seven. train again and another third down coming up Tom Brady doing a great job with the clock management taking every bit of time off the clock before snapping the ball and the Hawkeyes use their final timeout Michigan up by a point Third down and seven for the Wolverines. A first down and barring a turnover. And you can write this down in the W column for Michigan. But it won't be seven easy yards. Stopped him. Stopped him at the 44-yard line with 132. Remember, Iowa's out of timeouts. Jared DeVries. Number 94 is DeVries almost was in the neutral zone there. That easily could have been called against Iowa. Letting the clock run. They huddle up on that far side. The play clock now is signaled to start. They'll let it this run all the way down and take the uh, delay a game penalty. Michigan's just wearing out Iowa. Ten plays on the previous drive led to a field goal. That was the ninth play of this drive. Brady calls timeout as the play clock reaches one second. Great clock management by Tom Brady today. Well, our Chevrolet players of this game, and no surprise, they're going to be defensive stalwarts like Sam Sword over there, number 93. He played a great football game. Derek Holman with two interceptions for the Hawkeyes today. For Sword, a dozen tackles, one fumble recovery, and a sack. An idea of how Sword was absolutely sharpened and lethal in the second half. Well, he finally got healthy, it appears, Brent. Good lateral movement on a lot of these plays. This is the one I like where he strips the ball and makes the recovery. All over the place, though. Remember, he could have had an interception in that first half, too. He had better hands. Those hands are made for tackling, not catching. Tough one for that man here today, Hayden Fry. A year ago, up 21-7. They lose it, 28-24. Now they held the lead much of the game in the second half, 9-7, and then gave up the critical field goal to the Wolverines. And now... Coach Carr in Michigan. With Benson. Off to the side. Hill in a foot race. 
catch that stays in bounds at the five yard line. Swings back, got to avoid the end zone, did not, safety, a safety. Cahill Hill trying to make something happen, ducks back inside the end zone and is tackled for a safety. Michigan's lead is now three, and they'll get the ball back. It's a heartbreaking Saturday afternoon for the Hawkeyes. Well, he makes a good catch. He probably should have just let it go and given his offense the ball in the 20. There's just no way you're going to outrun. There's four white shirts right there. Anthony Jordan will get credit for the safety for Michigan. That's just a young mistake by the red shirt freshman. Michigan 12 and the Hawkeyes nine with 39 seconds remaining and the Wolverines do to receive a punt but nothing's a sure thing when you mention punt in Michigan on the receiving end well, the thing they they don't even have to uh, advance this punt on the free kick they could even let it bounce a little bit, uh, maybe even fair catch. But uh, there's no sense in even trying to return this ball anyway. There's no way that Iowa can stop the clock. Coach and young student. But you know what they're going to try to do, Brent? This is smart play. Is they're going to try the onside kick, put the ball on the tee. Remember, it's got to go to the 30-yard line before Iowa can touch this ball. But Michigan can come up and touch it at any point. So the hands folks are out there for the Wolverines. <laughs> Truman pounces on it at the 34 yard line. And Michigan ducks a bullet in Iowa City. The Wolverines go to 2 and 0 in the Big Ten. 34 yard line. So at least one part of the dream still lives for the Wolverines and their fans. They know they're going to wind up chasing Ohio State and Wisconsin looks like they're going to be a contender the rest of the way as the Badgers come from behind today. So Wisconsin at 2 and 0 leading the conference and Michigan will join them. Michigan will face Wisconsin and Ohio State back-to-back -back games late in November. So what they have to do is clear October for Coach Carr. Set sail against the Badgers and the Buckeyes. The dream of repeating as Big Ten champions is not over, even though this team lost two. And for this young team, they grew up tremendously today. Long about Wednesday, they can take heart in how hard they played here today. As it comes to an end with Michigan beating Iowa 12 9. An old warrior goes through the mill. So the Wolverines win it here. John and Todd, you take it away now in New York and get everybody up to date, my friend. So long, everybody. Brent, we will indeed. 12 to 9, the final. Michigan gets the win. Not a lot of scoring there, but the numbers to watch for. They've now won three games in a row, and they are 2 and 0 in the Big Ten. And that's all that matters. And they look good today on defense. Really a suffocating performance by the defense. They overcame the turnovers on the road. A lot of times when Michigan turns the ball over that much, they don't win the football game. They got it done today because of their defense. All right, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we will set the table of the entire day of college football. It's coming up next game at the end of the year but guess what they're on track to hit that one as well Penn State against Ohio State today a statement game if you would for the Buckeyes defense looked very good very aggressive Ohio State defense here Jerry Radzinski forces the fumble falls on it for a touchdown for Ohio State they were smothering all day and then right before the half key play 
Joe Germain, 20 yards to Michael Wiley. A touchdown would put Ohio State up 14-3 going into halftime. Smile, John. You're going to get a victory out of this one. Pat Pigeon has his punt blocked by Percy King, and Joe Cooper falls on it in the end zone for a touchdown. It was 21-3 at that point. They won it 28-9. Joe Germain, not spectacular numbers, but the W is there. Yeah, and very cool under pressure. Penn State played well on defense. Germain hung in there. He made the plays when he had to, scrambled a couple times. Solid game. Not spectacular, but solid. But a very solid overall performance for Ohio State. Again, 28-9 is the final there. And the offense, now 1968 was the last time they won the national championship, but they are rolling up some yards in this one. Yeah, they're on pace to have their most prolific offense ever. Uh, and you take a look at that. Today, the, the weather slowed them down a little bit, and Penn State played good on defense. But this is an offense that has a lot of weapons, and they're also very good on defense. Already almost 500 yards per game on offense. Now, Nebraska because we talked about this game last week. Nebraska stole seven first-place votes from Ohio State with a big win over Washington. So Ohio State as good as Nebraska? I think they are. You know, and the thing that Ohio State has this year that Nebraska's had for the last several years is they've got the strength and the power up front to run the football and to stop people from running. But on the perimeter, they have the speed that you normally don't see in Big Ten teams. You normally only see that in SEC teams. Nebraska has that combination of strength and speed. Ohio State has that combination of strength and speed. On defense today, Ohio State stopped Penn State. 55% of the plays Penn State ran on offense went for zero or negative yards. That's the same way Nebraska plays defense, attacks the line of scrimmage. Ohio State and Nebraska look to be the two best teams in the country right now because they have strength and speed. And if it stays that way, they will meet right here on ABC in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Washington State against UCLA last year. Washington State won this game and knocked UCLA out of the Rose Bowl. Jermaine Lewis, five yards on the touchdown run here. They're on top early and on top off. Well, Cade McDowell here shows what he's all about. The grit, the leadership, nothing's going to keep him out of the end zone. He's done that all year. You take a look at his numbers, 205 yards and a touchdown, but he provides great leadership. And you see opportunistic defense for UCLA. They force four turnovers, and they also block two punts of Washington State. They have the extra point now. It's 49 to 10. We'll keep you up to date. Tennessee against Auburn. I expected to see Tennessee go to the air, but here, Ben Lurd is pressured by Corey Terry. The pass is intercepted by Sean Ellis, who returns it 90 yards for the touchdown. The defense gets them on the ball. Come on, somebody's got to get in there. <laughs> Somebody in an Auburn uniform has to get in this picture. Not a lot of speed right there. Now, that was Auburn's opening drive. They moved the ball very well. Then the big return by Ellis. Jamal Lewis got banged up a little bit in the game, working on a tough ankle, 140 yards. He's been the workhorse for Tennessee on offense this season. Now, Terry Bowden, when he came into Auburn, really did a terrific job getting them going when they were under sanctions. But lately, look at this. Last six games of Jordan Hare, one and five. Last 11, five and six. Yeah, you talk about in the SEC wanting to have that home field advantage. It's not been that way for Auburn here of late. And that, that's tough to not play that well at home. Really a disappointing yeah. year thus far. All right, stick around. We'll continue with more of the thrifty car rental post-game report in just a moment. Plenty more scores and highlights still to come. Not deserved to win in a lot of ways. We made too many mistakes. But uh, I, I, what I'm happy about is they found the heart to keep fighting in a very tough place to play. You know. You almost think coaches are most happy when they squeak one up because he could see that very easily could have been a loss. Well, the one thing they've done very well, though, is they've played run defense extremely well. 65 yards they held Iowa running the football today. I mean, the last three weeks, they've done a great job stopping the run. And interestingly, they lost Marcus Ray after the second game. You know, the contact with an agent, the defense has played very well since losing one of their best players. And as of yet, they're not sure if they're going to get right. Marcus Ray back later in the season. Let's continue now in the SEC. Florida against Alabama. Alabama coming off a crushing loss to Arkansas. Looked like they'd lay down. Guess what? Doug Johnson picked off by Fernando Bryant here in the end zone. Jesse Palmer does have this one. 32 yards, though, to Travis McGriff. Well, Travis McGriff was definitely the go-to guy for both of the Florida quarterbacks. Here he beats him on the post. 32 yards for the touchdown. Alabama played very well at home, much better than they did last week against Arkansas, but an ill-advised throw at the end of the game. Tony Dow into the game, throws an interception to Tony George. Steve Spurrier knew he escaped with a, with a close one on the road. Again, Travis McGriff, nine catches, 213 yards on the offensive end for Florida. Lowest point total since 1992. Alabama, though, just at 90. 
total yards, and Javon Kerr, seven tackles and three sacks. He is a man-child. Kentucky against Arkansas. Arkansas trying to make it two wins of a row in the conference. Tim Couch, though, comes up firing, throws it towards the flag, and it's caught by Craig Yeast. Yeast, the go-to man for Kentucky. He's got great speed, great explosiveness, and they have a real chemistry. Couch and Yeast. Arkansas stopped the run last week against Alabama. Now the new challenge, stopping the pass of Kentucky. They've got to hope that their running game can keep Tim Couch on the sidelines. Right now it's even in the second quarter. Arkansas into the top 25. San Jose State, no match for Virginia, 52-14. to 14. San Jose State, three consecutive games will be the homecoming opponent. Yeah, I think they get their own float. They come to the game <laughs> on a float. Thomas Jones, though, 203, a career high for him. Great job running the football today by Virginia. And Anthony Poindexter also had his usual game. Ten tackles and a sack. In the ACC, Florida State against Maryland. Chris Wenke, of course, you know what the six interceptions against NC State. Since then, though, he hasn't thrown one. No, he hasn't thrown one. But I'll tell you what, one of the weapons Florida State has, you know about their receivers, the Travis Miners, the quarterback, everything, but their kicker, Sebastian Janikowski, five field goals today, ties a school record down the stretch in close games, that's a real comforting thing to know you have a kicker you can count on. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame probably should not have beaten Purdue last week. They steal the victory, and boy, do they look good winning this one against Stanford today. Looked really good running the football, and that's the kind of football that Notre Dame excels at when they can run and mix in the option. Jarius Jackson had a very solid game. Normally, he's been playing better in the second half, but in the first half, he played good all the way through today. Some of you will see Arizona State against the Irish next week right here on ABC. Wisconsin pulls it out against Indiana 24-20. Ron Dane over 4,000 yards for his career. 18th career game over 100 yards. This was a tough ball game. Indiana played very well at home behind their redshirt freshman, freshman quarterback, Antoine Randall L. But Wisconsin showed something getting the win in the end. And Ron Dane took him 28 games to get to 4,000. That is the second best in history behind Marshall Falk, behind Herschel Walker. Colorado, meanwhile, has the lead right now late over Oklahoma, 27 18. Stick around. More of the thrifty Carlino post game report in just a moment bulk and the power up front to run the football and stop people from running it but they also have the speed on the outside on both sides of the ball rare combination speed and power nebraska has it so does ohio state we'll find out later in the season all right washington state against ucla last year this decided who went to the rose bowl this time around ucla and cade mcdown rolling cade mcdown great leadership and an opportunistic ucla defense four turnovers by washington state a couple of punt blocks as well tennessee looking to pick up their fourth victory of the year and they do that squeaking it out though at auburn 17 to 9. Jamal Lewis with a great day, but Auburn just a struggling team, especially at home. Yeah, struggling at home, struggling to score any points. Tennessee keeping things close to the best on offense, giving it to big number 31, Jamal Lewis, 140 yards today on a bad ankle. All right, Florida against Alabama. And for Florida, they squeeze one out. Alabama looked so bad against Arkansas last week, but defensively much better today. Yeah, an inspired effort today. Three turnovers in the red zone by Florida. Travis McGriff and Javon Curse on both sides of the ball. The stars today for the Gators. All right, we talked about Arkansas against Alabama last week. Today they are facing Kentucky. Tim Couch has them to the lead. Came out early through a touchdown pass. They're up 13-7. No relaxing against Kentucky. I mean, Tim Couch is, is a touchdown away every time he has the ball in his hand. A little different for Arkansas today going against the the passing game of Kentucky. Virginia blows out San Jose State for San Jose State. Three consecutive weeks is the homecoming opponent. Yeah, well, this will be the longest one. 2,900 miles on a float to come and play Virginia. <laughs> Thomas Jones, 203 yards, a career high for him. Great job running the football today by Virginia. And Anthony Poindexter, we call his name out every week. Yeah. Ten tackles and a sack. Florida State against Maryland. This one was a little tough early on in the game, but Chris Wenke has really picked himself up after the six interceptions against NC State. The Seminoles have been without a turnover since that game, North Carolina State. They're playing a little more conservatively on offense, but the defense starting to pick it up. Roland Seymour here causes the fumble. It's recovered for a safety. 24 to 10, Florida State comes away with it. Sebastian Janikowski, nice to know you have a solid field goal kicker. Five field goals ties the school record today. We talked about no interceptions, 82 attempts since those six against NC State. Stanford, no match for Notre Dame today. 
35 to 17. You wondered how they would come out. Jarius Jackson, after stealing that victory against Purdue last week, they look good. Yeah, this has been a team that normally has played better in the second half, but a very solid effort for four quarters today by Notre Dame. Jarius Jackson doing a nice job running the option. And some of you will see them against Arizona State right here on ABC next week, 3.30 Eastern Time. Stick around. Back with more after this. My dentist told me about this new gum. It's in the toothpaste style. This gum cleans, whitens, freshens. Toothpaste style. Toothpaste, toothpaste style. style. New Arm & Hammer Dental Care Gum with baking soda reduces unsightly plaque up to 25%. Dental Care Gum. Toothpaste style. Man, this gray hair makes me look old. Then do what I did. Get rid of it. You were gray. I never knew that. No one can tell you use the remarkable hair coloring called Just For Men. Simply shampoo in, then rinse. In only five minutes, this unique Just For Men formula blends away the gray, actually matches your gray to your real color. Even I can't tell why it used to be gray. Thanks. Just For Men looks so natural, even friends can't tell. The lightweight aluminum in your car radiator is the only thing between you and a breakdown. Put in Presto. It bonds with aluminum to give you a powerful zone of protection against corrosion. Protect your car in the Presto zone. The thrifty car rental post came reform. Great cars in over 70 countries around the world. Best of all, it's thrifty. Night football this week on ABC. The new time of 8 o'clock Eastern time is...